Hi. What we're looking at again tonight is uh, another of my Beckman Industrial 9020s. It's a uh, 20 megahertz dual trace oscilloscope. Has vertical deflection uh, that goes from 5 millivolts per division to 5 volts per division. It does that in 10 range steps. It covers a time base uh, that runs from a tenth of a microsecond per division to two seconds per division and it does that in 20 range steps. It uh, will expand the horizontal in a times 10 fashion. It provides a delay that goes anywhere from a tenth of a microsecond to uh, 10 milliseconds. Um, has XY capability, uh, auto and normal uh, trigger, uh, plus and minus uh, the slope, we uh, have different vertical modes. We can go um, single channel, either channel one or two, both channels together. We have an alternating mode in the chop mode. We can do an additive or normal view, or we can invert the view. We have something called a component test that allows us to look at the signatures, electronic signatures of uh, all various kinds of components, like. Uh, resistors, capacitors, transistors, and so on. We'll demonstrate that a little later. Um, let's see, have I covered anything else? We have uh, the vertical positioning controls. We have an intensity control. We have a nice bright trace, as you can see. The intensity can take it from nothing to a very bright trace. We can go, the focus can go from Soft blur, sharp clarity, a little blur again. And as you can see, we have a nice clean trace. But wait a minute, that's not one trace, that's two traces. Let's take a look where is channel two. Up oh, there's channel two, superimposed over the channel one, and grounded. Channel 1 is grounded. Channel 2 is up again, but we're not locked into channel 2 as a source on the trigger, so we'll make it a trigger source. And then uh, let's bring in channel 1 again. There we go. Now, the only reason I did all of that is trying to impress you with the fact that both traces are on top of each other uh, so perfectly that it looks like one trace. And that's because everything's been calibrated properly and we are tracking very closely together. It's the way it should be. So, let's keep going. Uh, we can produce a single trace or we can go in an auto trace, uh, multiple traces as we want. We can provide for an external trigger. We have a, uh, a calibration point for the, uh, the probe calibration. Uh, that's where you adjust the uh, internal capacitance of the probe uh, to give you the best uh, transmission of the signal as possible. Um, we, like I showed here, we have uh, AC, DC, and ground, ground in between. We have a beam finder. If we can't, uh, can't find the beam any other way, we can hit beam finder and it'll show up on the screen. And uh, coupling can go AC, DC, low frequency, or high frequency. So we have a very versatile little uh, little scope here. It does a heck of a lot of different things. Uh, does it in a 20 megahertz range? Which, uh, granted, that's not uh, that's not one of the 400 megahertz monsters that we have nowadays, or even a gigahertz. However, uh, this this unit will not sell for anywhere near that kind of a price, and uh, is more than adequate for the majority of the uh, experimenters' needs, like myself. Um, I've used one of these for a number of years. Uh, I have recently gone up to 100 megahertz uh, because I use the, the scope to verify a lot of higher frequency signals on the gear that I sell, but uh, I had a 25 megahertz unit that I used for a number of years. So, let's go ahead and take this thing through uh, some of its paces and show you uh, that the calibration is ac accurate. Okay, I uh, pulled the cover off of the unit because I wanted to make another adjustment. And while I was at it, I thought I'd give you guys a look at it. 
This is a uh, horizontal board. This would be the uh, horizontal sweep, the timing. Um, we have the trigger board in here. Vertical board is underneath. Power supply board in the back. Of course, the tube. It's neat. No char marks or filth or anything like that. I've cleaned it up very well. And um, doing my best to calibrate it. And we'll put her back together here in a minute and run, enough, run some more tests. Okay, so we have the uh, Beckman connected up to this Fluke 343A. It's a DC voltage standard. And we're feeding a voltage in through the probe. Uh, and we're going to observe uh, on the ranges what our response is to, uh, to each of the steps. I'm gonna All right, as you can see, we're zeroed. And um, I'm going to go ahead and take our first step. We are... Um, we are right at the moment on the 5 millivolt scale. This is our most sensitive scale. And we're going to provide uh, 10 millivolts. So we should jump two divisions. And in fact, we jumped exactly two divisions. If I go another 10, we should go full scale. And, in fact, that's exactly what we did. Okay, let's go to 10 millivolts per division. And from where we are, uh, we are now uh, two divisions up. That would mean we are at 20 millivolts, which is uh, exactly correct. Let's go to 30. 40. Okay. Up another range step. We are not 20 millivolts per division, so... Two divisions would be 40 millivolts, and that's exactly what we're feeding in. Let's go to 50. All right, now we're at 80 millivolts coming in, and now we have 1, 2, 3, 4 divisions times 20 millivolts per division is 80 millivolts. Okay, so now going to 50 millivolts per division. We are showing 80 on the scale. Scale. Let's uh, let's make this. Uh, okay. We now have 100 millivolts coming in, and we are two divisions up. That's as it should be. Let's go. Um, Two hundred millivolts, and we are full scale. Okay. Point one millivolts per division. So we are two divisions up. So that's uh, two hundred millivolts. Should be able to go three hundred, four hundred. Point two volts per division. We are. Two divisions up, that'd be 0.4, and that's where we're at, 400 millivolts. So let's go to 5, 600, 700, 800, full scale. 0.5 volts per division. And there is um, 1 volt, and we are 1, 2 divisions up, times 0.5 would be 1 volt. That's perfect. Let's uh, increase our range to one volt per division. Let's take ourselves back down here. There's one, two volts, three volts, four volts, full scale. 
two volts per division. We are two divisions up. That's four volts. Let's go five, six, seven, eight. We'll scale. Five volts per division. All right. We have uh, ten volts coming in. We're two divisions up. Two times five is ten. That matches. Okay. And... Um, Right. We are uh, 5 volts per division. We are 10, uh, 10 volts coming in. And we see 2 divisions up. 2 times 5 is 10. Okay. Here's uh, 20. And at 20, that would be 1, 2, 3, 4 times 5 is 20. We're full scale. So we've gone through all of channel 1 with the DC and we've seen the responses appropriate. Back down to zero, no problem. Let's take a look on channel two and we'll quickly go through the same thing. Okay, we are now set up on channel two and uh, we are feeding in... Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, it. All right, right there we are feeding in 5 millivolts. We are on the 5 millivolt per division scale setting, range setting. We're on channel 2, and we are up one division, which means we have 5 millivolts available. Now let's go ahead and take ourselves up to 10. Here's 10. We're up two divisions. Two times five is ten. There's twenty. And we should see that we are at the top of the range. No problem. Okay, let's go to ten millivolts per division. That brings our line. It's just by... Okay, I have to touch up our uh, zero point. There we go. And ourselves back on and there we are exactly two divisions up uh, two we are on the 10 millivolt range so that's 20 millivolts that we are reading let's go to 30 40 top of the range no problem come back down to 20 millivolts per division we are two divisions up that's 40 millivolts that's what we have coming in let's go to 50 60 70 80 Next out, go to 50 millivolts per division. And let's go 100 millivolts in. We are one, two divisions up. Two times 50 is 100. Let's go 200. We should be at the top of our range, no problem. We are now at 0.1 volts per division. And we are um, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 volts up, which is right. Let's go 0 0.3 and 0 0.4, top of the range. 0 0.2 volts per division. We have 0.4 volts coming in. We're two divisions up. That's 0.4 volts. 5, 6, 0 0.6 volts, 7, 0.8 volts. We're at the top of the range, 0.5 volts per division. There's uh, <clears throat> uh, one volt coming in. We have two divisions up. That's one volt. Not a problem. Okay, let's go to one volt per division. There's one volt, one division, two volts, three volts, four volts, two volts per division. We are two divisions up, two times two is four, we are four volts, that's accurate. Five, six volts, seven, eight volts. 
five volts per division range. Let's uh, get ourselves back down here again. All right, we have one volt. Sorry, 10 volts. That's uh, 1, 2 divisions times 5 is 10 volts. Okay, let's go um, 20 volts. 1, 2, 3, 4 divisions times 5 volts per division is 20 volts. So there we have it. Both channels checked out marvelously um, with the DC readings. And uh, we'll move on, take a look at some AC readings, uh, just a few. And uh, then we're going to take it through its frequency tests. So bear with me. Okay, so let's... Uh, I've taken one of the oscilloscope probes and I've connected myself up to uh, channel 1. And I'm going to connect up to the calibration test point. And then we observe the the result. What's expected of us now at this point is um, to adjust using this trim capacitor on the on the probe. There's a slot right here in the end of the, of the probe and we're going to adjust this uh, trim capacitor to give us the, the squarest looking wave we can. Now, we're going to exaggerate the uh, results. Come on. We're going to exaggerate the adjustment so that you can see the difference. All right, there's overshoot, undershoot, and then we want to get square. To me, that looks to be about the squarest input right there. So, so I've now properly adjusted my probe. Uh, so that I can read AC frequencies with it. And I've demonstrated to you that our calibration test point is functional. All right, we have the uh, Beckman connected now to our AC calibration device. We're picking up where we left off. We're still connected to channel 2. We have the uh, range setting on the 5 millivolt per division range set. So we're the, at the lowest. And um, uh, we're feeding in through our, uh, our test probe. We're on the times 10 position. So uh, in order for us to be reading uh, what we desire on, on the uh, scope, I'm going to have to be feeding a signal in that's 10 times stronger than what, it, what the scope is reading because of the probe. But that's good because... I would like to uh, to not have to register all of the noise that's uh, that's prominent at something that's been reduced ten times uh, from the source. So this will give us a cleaner signal. And uh, my device up here is an RMS reading device. My scope is reading peak to peak, so I'm going to be converting my uh, my RMS voltage to a peak voltage, and then uh, we'll be able to see that it's registering properly on the screen. Right now uh, we are feeding in uh, a uh, uh, excuse me a 10 millivolt signal peak to peak uh, sorry 10 millivolt peak signal so we're going plus 10 minus 10 and that is proper we're getting uh, two divisions up two divisions down we're on the five millivolt scale so that's 10 millivolt two divisions up would be 10 millivolts up 10 millivolts down okay now if I go to 10 millivolts per division we are now plus one division up and one down and that is registering properly 
I'm going to go ahead and now uh, double my input to 20 millivolts. So to do that, So we're now reading 20 millivolts. We're coming up two divisions and down two divisions. That's uh, 2 times 10 millivolts per division is 20 millivolts. Okay, let's go to 20 millivolts per division. We now have shrunk down to one division. We'd like to double this again in order to be able to uh, to show it. So we will go um, two eight two eight. There we go. So we now have one two divisions up. We're at twenty millivolts per division. Uh, that's 40 millivolts of signal, and uh, and I do indeed have 40 millivolts coming in. Okay, let's go to 50 millivolts per division. Um, okay, 20 millivolts, 40. 50 millivolts per division. We're reading 0.4 divisions up. That's that would be right. And we would like now to uh, to read a whole division here. So we'll need to change this setting. All right. That is 50 millivolts coming in, and we show a plus one minus one. Scale. Let's go ahead and kick ourselves up um, three times that amount. There we are. So we are now <coughs> getting one, two, three divisions at 50 millivolts per division. That's 150 millivolts. Um, and we do indeed have 150 millivolts coming in, so we're good. We are now 0.1 volts per division. And we would like now to go to 0.2 volts, so I am going to kick this up to... There we go. So we now have uh, we now have 200 millivolts coming in, and we show one two divisions up at 100 millivolts per division. So that's 200 millivolts. So there we, we got it. If we are on the 200 millivolt per division scale. We're up one, down one. That's it's as it should be. I'm going to go ahead and jump to the next scale. 0.5 volts per division and uh, we would like to have two divisions so let's go Two volts coming in, and um, I'm 
have, sorry, we have one bolt coming in. We are reading two divisions at 0.5 volts per division, and that's one volt. So plus one minus one volt peak. Okay. If I go to one volt per division, we see we have one division up, one division down. That's as it should be, too. And then let's uh, go ahead and triple that. Three volts coming in. We have one, two, three divisions. We are one volt per division, so it's three up and three down. We're good. If we go to the two volt scale, then we want to increase to four volts coming in. There we go. We now have uh, four volts coming in. We are two volts per division. We're up two, we're down two. That would be right. Five volts per division. And we want uh, three, five, three. We are now plus or minus one division, and that is five volts coming in, five volts being displayed. All right. And if we uh, we want to increase that, let's say we want to double it, so we'll go. So now we have uh, 10 volts coming in. We have two up, two down division wise, and that's at 5 volts division. That's 10 volts. So, so we've just read accurately uh, the AC signal uh, across this range. Let's see if we can speed it up a little bit on uh, channel 1, and we'll try and do the same thing. Alright, we are now on channel 1. We are at the 5 volt range where we just left off on channel 2. And we see that we are up 2 divisions, down 2 divisions. Uh, that would be 2 times 5 is 10 volts. So we are reading 10 volts right now, and we have 10 volts coming in. Let's uh, go ahead and cut this down. 2 volts per division. And we would like to have all right there we have two volts coming in so we're up one down one and that's on the uh, two volt per division scale so that's accurate let's uh, go ahead and uh, and jump to six volts coming in. All right, now we have six volts AC, six volt peak coming in. We are one, two, three divisions up at two volts per division, that's six volts. Okay. One volt per division, and we would like to have two volts displayed, so let's go uh, four, one, four. That should be two volts now. Two volts coming in, we got uh, one, two divisions. At uh, one volt per division, that's two volts, so we're good there. Okay. All right, we are now on 0.5 volts per division. And let's say we'd like to read uh, 1.5 volts. We should be 
one point zero one six. Uh, 1.5 volts coming in. We have one, two, three divisions at uh, 0.5 volts per division is 1.5 volts, so we're good. Let's, uh, we're going to go down to the 0.2 scale, so now we would like to have, um, let's say we have a 0.6 volt, I'm sorry, yeah, well, I want to display 0.6 volts, so I would now need, I now have 0.6 volts coming in. I have 1, 2, 3 divisions at 0.2 volts per division is 0.6. So good. Okay. We're on 0.1 volt per division. And let's say we want to have uh, 0.3 volts displayed. So we're going to want two, one, three. All right, we have points. Uh, 0.3 volts coming in. One, two, three divisions, 0.1 volt per division is 0.3 volts, so we're good again. Let's um, drop this. We're going to 50 millivolts per division. 50 millivolts, um, seven, one. There we go. So we now have um, 0.1 volts coming in. That would be two divisions times 50 millivolts is 0.1. Good. All right. 20 millivolts per division. All right. We want. Um, let's say we want 60 millivolts displayed. Uh, 60 millivolts, 1, 2, 3 divisions times 20 millivolts per division is 60 millivolts. Okay, 10 millivolts per division. Let's say we, uh, we would like to have uh, 30 millivolts displayed. That would be two one two one three two one two one three. There we go. So we should have thirty millivolts. To, let's see one two three times ten millivolts per division is thirty millivolts. Good. And we are on five millivolts per division. lowest range and let's say we would like to have um, 15 millivolts displayed that would be 106 065 and that would be it so we should now have 15 millivolts. Let's see. One, two, three divisions. We're at five millivolts per division. Is 15 millivolts. So that does it. We've uh, we've checked our our both of our channels with DC and with AC, and both channels pass with flying colors as far as being able to read the signals. So vertical calibration looks very good on this machine, and. Um, Let's move on to the uh, to the time base. 
Okay, we are connected up. We're at uh, two seconds per division. We have a half hertz coming in. So at a half uh, hertz, we uh, we take two seconds per cycle. So let's see. Peak, crest, peak. Bottom, peak. Bottom, peak. So per division, we're getting one full cycle with a half hertz, which would be right, because that takes two seconds, and there's two seconds per division. And that's the way our time base is set up. If I was to um, turn the time base up to uh, one second per division, then in order to have a full cycle, right now we're going to be having one cycle in two divisions because we're still at half hertz. We're going to go up to one hertz right now, right there. And we should see that we peak, peak, press, peak, press, peak. So one per division. That's working fine. Okay, this is 0.5 seconds per division. So one hertz is going to take two divisions. Let's watch it. One, two, one, two, one, two, yes. Now let's go to two cycles. We should take one now. We should get one cycle per division. Up, down, up, down, up, down. That's one cycle per division. Let's go to 0.2 seconds per division. All right, now that should take... Uh, five cycles. So if we go in with five cycles, that's 0.2 seconds per division. Because 1 over 5 is 0.2. All right. Now let's go to 0.1 second per division. And at this point, what I think I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go backwards. All right, let's go to one, 1 hertz again. So we are at 0.1 seconds per division. And I've got 10 divisions across the screen, so that's 1 second. 1 second is... It takes one hertz, one second to traverse the screen. So, if we watch this, uh, we should be able to see us start the cycle and then complete it across the screen. So, getting one full cycle per per ten divisions. All right. Now let's go to fifty milliseconds per division. That's going to take us two cycles per second in ten divisions. All right. Let's go to twenty milliseconds. That'll be five cycles. starting to trigger now, which is good because we can control where we see everything. All right, we see ourselves entering the screen on the left, going down, coming up across the middle of the screen, up and then off on the right. And that's five cycles per second, uh, 20 milliseconds per division. We're going to go to 10 milliseconds per division. We need to go to 10 hertz now. Go. Give ourselves just a little bit of. There we go. So we can see one full trace of the screen. Beautiful. Five milliseconds per division. We need to go to 20 hertz. There's 20 hertz. Let's go to two milliseconds per division. We want to go to 50 hertz. Okay. 
one millisecond per division. Go to 100. All right. Let's go to um, 0.5 milliseconds per division. 200. There we go. We'll get it straight. 200 hertz. Okay. We go to 0.2 milliseconds per division. Now we go to 500. Point 0.1 milliseconds per division, we want to go to a thousand. Fifty microseconds, we want to go to two thousand. Twenty microseconds, we want to go to five thousand. There we go. Ten microseconds per division, we want to go to 10,000, right there, 5 microseconds, we want to go to 20,000, 2 microseconds, go to 50, 1 microsecond, we want to go to 100,000, I go to oops, 0.5 microseconds, we go to 200,000, 1 micro, no, 0.2 microseconds, we go to 500,000, okay, all right, we are at uh, 0.2 microseconds per division. We have 500,000 hertz coming in, we've marked it. And we go to 0.1 microseconds per division. And we want to go to 1 megahertz. And we end our quest for the timepiece. Okay, we've uh, gone from the standard sweep position which would be in here and I pushed on the component test which requires I make a little adjustment to the positioning and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to see that they have a, a system in here called component test that gives us what they call uh, signatures uh, which are actually responses to the um, to the electrical stimulus provided through the through these test cables from the component test circuit. Essentially it's a, um, I think it's a 60 hertz uh, 10 volt low current, current uh, uh, controlled uh, signal. And <coughs> it's set up so that the, uh, the scope is sort of measuring it in a sweep system. And when you get done, what you're gonna see is all these signatures. So like here is a signature of a short circuit, here's a resistor, capacitor, power transformer, base collector junction, base uh, emitter junction, and so on. Gives you an idea of the response uh, current-wise to the voltage that's being applied over time. And uh, Let's go ahead and hook up a capacitor. This is a 0.33 microfarad capacitor. Okay. There we go. And as you see, it's a thin oval. And if we look at the uh, at the signature for a capacitor, it's an it's an oval. Now, in this case, it says capacitor 47 microfarad. We're looking at a capacitor 0.33 microfarad. So the oval collapses, becomes more of a horizontal line eventually. Let's take a look at a 
at a 47 microfarad like they have in the picture. Now the nice thing about this component testing is that it's supposed to be non-destructive so we can do this and not worry about destroying the item that we're uh, working with. Come on, there we go. All right, there's a 47 microfarad capacitor. It's an electrolytic. And there's the response we got, which is a lot more like the response that they had indicated in the book here. All right, let's try um, let's try a resistance, a varying resistance. Take me a moment. I'm going to hook something up. Okay, so I've hooked up this Heath Kit uh, Decade Resistance Box, and um, I'm going to change my resistance. Right now, we're looking at the response, and this is zero resistance, so we're basically a short circuit. Let's go ahead and put in 100 ohms. 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900. Okay. Let's try um, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If we have approximately 50,000 ohms in circuit, we basically get a horizontal line. I go 10,000 ohms at a time. It's a big jump. And the 100 ohms gives me the more reactive uh, steps, but it only steps to a point, and it's the, each step slows down as I increase my resistance until finally it takes a 10,000 ohm step to, to make a significant jump. So that's interesting. Let's uh, take a look at some other devices. All right, what we're looking at here is a 2N2222 transistor. I've clipped up on a couple of the terminals, and I see that uh, as I go one direction, the negative direction here, I'm holding zero current till I hit a certain point and then it avalanches. Or if I go the other direction, for a very small positive jump, I significantly increase. And I'm going to tell you that I submit to you that that's the uh, 0.7 volt breakdown point of the silicon uh, barrier. So as the trans, as that barrier is is turned on, you see a significant increase in current with a small increase in voltage, and that's exactly what you'd expect. And then in the reverse direction, you'd expect this big gap here and then an avalanche. So that's the signature here of the base emitter junction. And it told us that that would be the case in this picture right here, base emitter junction. Let's, uh, let's see if we can find the base collector. I'm now connected to the base in the collector, and what I see is, as I go to the negative direction, I have no current, and then I go to, as I go slightly to the positive direction, I, I have a big breakdown in the, in, or break the barrier, and I pass the current very heavily, and that's exactly the picture that it would indicate that I should have had. Okay. Let's take a look at the emitter collector barrier. Okay, so what I see here is I have no current till I hit a very high breakdown point, and then I get this reverse break. And that is exactly what I'm told I would get in this component diagram here. Let's take a look at a uh, Zener.
There's our Zener diode. This happens to be a 5.1 volt Zener. And what I see is in the uh, reverse direction, I, uh, I hold steady and then I avalanche. In the positive direction, I go I go forward somewhat and then I, I very quickly spike up in current there. This is exactly what the uh, what the signatures uh, indicate would have happened for a Zener diode under 8 volts. And this is a 5.1 volt Zener, so definitely fits the bill. I'll turn that down a little bit. There we go. And then if we take a look at a, uh, a standard um, diode, there we go. So we have <clears throat> the negative direction for a very long period. Actually, we don't break down at all. We just pass no current. And then in the forward direction, with just a little bit of voltage, we spike up. That would be the 0.7 volt uh, forward voltage drop that turns on the, the, uh, the diode. And that is exactly uh, what a silicon diode should look like. So anyway, they give you this page of, um, of component test patterns and it allows you to experiment with different, uh, different signatures and you could actually use this uh, to test in system the power off you could test components in system and and if you uh, know what the component should be and then you should know what the signature should look like you can get an idea of whether or not the component is good or bad and if you have a bad component then it's going to be either a, maybe a flat line if it's open it could be a, a vertical line if it's shorted um, instead of being a nice capacitance maybe it's shorted that kind of thing so you would you would, it would indicate that uh, the device was not functioning properly. Maybe with a, a silicon device, for instance, uh, again, you could have a flat line that'd be open, vertical line that'd be shorted, uh, or maybe you've got a resistive load where it's uh, just an angular uh, display. So that's the uh, component test. It's functioning on this uh, circuit mate. A lot of people uh, will buy Huntron trackers and other things like that. Uh, spend a lot of money on them to uh, to do something very similar to this uh, in component signature uh, evaluation, just to uh, to diagnose uh, components on a circuit. So this gives you the a at least an introduction and, and into the capabilities there, and you can experiment and do the same. Well, so there pretty much you have it. Um, I will be giving the scope uh, with all of its capabilities. We have two brand new um, 20 megahertz probes that will come with it. We have, I will throw in these, um, these handy component test leads for the component test. Those are uh, something that most people don't have in their shop. It's a short set of leads with banana mating ends to, uh, to mate with that scope. We have the Beckman Industrial Manual for this scope. So uh, we're taking care of you. You're, you're going to be in good shape. So uh, good luck to the bidders and uh, stay tuned. We'll be back again. Thanks.